Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty back with the letter. Uh, this, this is mostly focusing on the Zack and Hana romance route, but we got to this- I decided might as well get this scene again, where we leave the movies and Rebecca comes to her- I'm pretty sure this is a new scene, if not, you'll never see this, so... We're gonna say, I was telling the truth. I was telling the truth! What is it that people often say? Words lose their meaning when you keep repeating them? And they do. My voice comes out as a whisper, an earnest plea. But its meaning rings hollow even in my own ears. How long are they gonna keep asking me the same thing? How many times do I have to tell them what they would have seen before they believed me? Pick a picks of the letter from the table, and for the first time since this exchange started, I look up from my food. She inspects it in the same manner one does with something fragile, holding it with all the care in the world. Her stare lingers on the message printed on it. Something pensive sits in her face as she reads the lines over and over again. I want to stop her, take the paper away from her hands, hide it. But it's too late now, isn't it? It dawns on me now that maybe yesterday's argument was also my fault, because more than wanting them to believe me, I'm also running away from the guilt, from the idea that I've put my own friends in danger, and I'm afraid to do anything about it. I'm a coward. Sorry, I wasn't able to get a good look at it when Ash was holding it yesterday. On top of a new conversation, I also want to get that CG I've seen. Of the two of them together. It isn't like it'll make a difference. Where did you even buy this? The attic. Attic where? The mansion? You know, this might have a historical significance. I doubt it. It was on the floor when I saw it. So a prank then? It's not a prank! That's the same thing I was telling you yesterday! Then tell me what happened! I can't understand where you're coming from if you keep giving me short clipped answers! Please? I fell silent. Becca's far from a person who'll believe in such things yet. You really want to hear it? She nods. I tell her everything, from the moment I arrived at the mansion, my search for Rose, and what I saw. True to her words, she listens. Not in the same way a person hangs onto a story tells every word if, if it's the only truth in the world, but in a manner a person who is simply offered to lend an ear to someone who needs it does. So yeah, this is dialogue we've seen before. Let's see if here. Let's see if either of these leads to that. Thank you, me. Becca. You can bring. So that didn't lead to anything new. I'm gonna try the other one. There has to be a way to get that CG. I don't, I don't think there's a CG guide. You are such a big baby. Move over. I know how we'll fix this. She motions for me to scoot, and I do so, though not without a scoff. Typical Becca, a teacher through and through, regardless of where she is. Then, without notice, she pulls my head to her lap. We got it! I freeze. What are you doing? Though this does look a little bit different. Singing you to sleep, like the big baby you are. I may not be as good a singer as you are, but I can handle a few tunes. Stop treating me like a kid! This is completely unnecessary! I make an attempt to straighten up, but Becca's persistent. Gently, she pushes my head back down. I'm kidding! Didn't you say this is how your mom used to lull you to sleep? I just thought you could use something familiar to you. You're not my mom. It may sound like a complaint, but we both know the statement has no ill will attached to it. How are they back home? You said they called? Good. From what Mama told me, EJ won a medal. Who's EJ again? The youngest. A bit chubby on the cheeks. I showed you a picture of him once. You said he looks a little like me, especially around the eyes. She's quiet as I talk, interrupting only to ask a question if there's something she doesn't understand. I tell her of my four younger siblings, little troublemakers, all of them. And of my no good little brother, who almost landed himself in jail a month ago. Of my sister, who had to move away recently to run from her ever-increasing debts. It's the same old story she's heard countless of times. Yet, every time she asks, every time it's brought up, she listens tirelessly. Becca may not believe me about the ghost. She may have just been listening to help keep my fears at bay. But for now, I am content. Sleep comes easier tonight. Oh, let's see. Get a new journal entry? New picture? Hmm, no, no picture though. So, pause in again. So, picking up as Hana so we can do our Zack romance. Well, we have seen this scene already, but you know. It is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. He is hard to miss, the hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him look so much larger. It is a peculiar sight, seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the guardians and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Hope you weren't waiting too long. 
but it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. The one and only. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Right. And yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steel? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steel makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Hana, if I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Wright. Hana. Zachary proves quickly enough that I can, in fact, trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in this industry at the very least. He is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow, and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with him. I answer his questions to the best of my ability, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I ask what the bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruits, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are brought in for a kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, and decorative soaps. There are other things as well, too numerous to count, all in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. I think I'd feel weird having stuff that wasn't mine placed in my home for photographs. People would see those photos and think that things, those things are mine. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. I think this mansion's a little dark for that, though. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackle the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. The ballroom needs a little preparation with its grand design, although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy, considering how Johannes kept the place so neat and sterile one could practically eat off the floor. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with the exception of the rooms which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried about botched photographs. I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, cathartic for him, cons judging by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. He even goes so far as to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I ask about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the picture as it is made, much like when I watch artists paint on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft such as this is exciting in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us. Despite that, he has been so nice, and I find myself putting on my best smile. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And had I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have even noticed. It is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is pulled to a halt. His finger doesn't move to release the shutter, yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face, gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake and there is a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary! No response. Zach, is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Turning around, though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Everything stops. And everything starts again as I manage to choke up. If you're sure. I don't know what just happened. If... it was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. For magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. What is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line, sticking my nose into other people's business, but I can't help but ask. I regret doing so, as I see a soldier slump and the easygoing air he has fade away. He looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films. Documentaries, mostly. But 
Cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibi a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Fancy is all about? He hesitates. But when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Blue Fancy, Le Hure, La Place Sombre des Noirs Britanniques. Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. He speaks with a passion of one who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. Why, I would have told him that he is an amazing speaker, if only I wasn't so engrossed, listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in the workplace. Lesser chances for opportunity and higher chances of being treated like a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general still being treated like second-class citizens, all because of the color of their skin. It is all just positively riveting and sad. He comes to a point where he soon loses steam. He looks abashed, realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and... It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion, after all. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have very beautiful eyes. Takes on a whole new context, knowing what we know now. Uh-huh. Thanks, I guess. I want to say that I understand where he's coming from. But I really don't, do I? I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, and I've lived a charmed life. It hasn't been perfect, but the difficulties I've been through pale in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. I certainly don't know how I would have fared were it any different. Would I have still met Luke, and would he have still loved me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things you talk about. It sounds like you... well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? Live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our pop... Sorry. Flat. And well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around, but a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, it may be a slightly different story when you have personal guards, and the stolen item is not a pencil, but an expensive heirloom. So what about you? How are you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? Not big enough? What? No, oh, don't be a bully. It's just that. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like a fragile porcelain, with nursemaids waiting on me hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for on a whim, and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents, just goodbye kisses in the morning before they went off to do who knows what where they needed to be next. I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big holes, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. A pensive mood overcomes us, and there's a moment when neither of us are sure how to go on from there. Things have gotten a bit too personal, yet it isn't wholly really uncomfortable. Like as if we were friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. You'll make home out of it yet. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and extravagant. And just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photograph, you've covered the one and only Ermengarde Mansion. What's next on the agenda? The interview? Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Anna Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah. Boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi, The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? We, oui. People are shite. What do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking taken aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to just go and say such a crass word. But he recovers quickly and, after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. You must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. Though, I, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry, but I've made lunch for a girl before and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Can you cook all your best? I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. C'est magnifique. It has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee is certainly not a good friend. And although we've just met, Zachary is the sort who can probably befriend anyone. 
He's just a comfortable person to be around with. A bit too comfortable. Photoshoot went by... Photoshoot was a breeze. And somewhere along the way, as we talk and laugh, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me this strange look until I back off, and I'll go back to asking questions after I agreed to do, do his little interview. And it's just odd. Well, no. Me being friendly isn't that odd. This is how I am. Zach. Zachary is the one that's being odd. Why, anyone else would be absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. He should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, but he's a big boy. He shouldn't be able to handle me. All it was, all it is, is a friendly touch here, a pretty smile there, and gentle swing of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew and grew... Zachary grew more and more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside view. At least that's how I see I'm, it. I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? Not sure if I want to, though. I'll stop if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Sorry. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but... I guess you should the ring on my finger, unless the fact of the matter hang heavily between us. I would have expected her to have a ring that was, like, with a diamond. This is my only sunshine. Being told implicitly that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out, rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. I was just going to be some harmless flirting, right? So, you've never had a girlfriend? No. No boyfriend either. You know, just in case you were going to ask for that one next. And you haven't even had your first kiss? Not a one, ma'am. Do you want to have your first kiss today? I can't help it. I really, really can't, and I'm going to apologize lots later. Surely, by the catty smile on my face, it's obvious that I'm just pulling his legs. <laughs> the laugh I fail to contain certainly gives it away, if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lights up in embarrassment, stammering and sputtering objection. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. I never said I would kiss you, silly. Oh, you're Hans. No, what? No, no. D don't call your butler. She's Hannah. That would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. I do not think he can hear us from here either. But it is hard to think you're not taken, Zachary. Why, whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs, wonderful meals, and wonderful memories. I can play guitar, too. You can? Oh, my. Wonderful serenades as well, then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine, strapping young gentleman like yourself. Let's not get carried away. Besides, I gotta be going. It's getting late, and I got someplace else to be. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope. For a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Just... You know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. As fate would have it, the very moment the words leave his mouth, Johannes comes out of the house. Judging by the slight raise of his brows, he has only heard the tail end of the sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. But you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely placing him within the threshold of the foyer and under the roof of the house. And just as ever, he is quick to return with a sardonic reply. I am now. As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Oh, what? No, I was just leaving, actually. So, you have a good night, Hannah, and you too, Hansy. It was nice to meet you, Zach, Connie. You have a safe trip. He nods, and the grin on his face as we say our goodbyes is the sweetest that I have ever seen. I linger, looking out for him with his relatively tiny bicycle, backpack safely secured in the basket by the front, and suitcase hooked to the back. I watch as he goes down the path to Anselm Village, until he is nothing more than a blip on the horizon. I can't help the small smile on my face as I go inside for supper. So, we're gonna pause till we get to the next scene with them. Okay, so we are here after the party fiasco with Rochelle. Rebecca has left to go get her purse, also known as Ashton, leaving us alone with Zachary. Yeah, you need something? I was only going to say how nice it is to see you again. Oh, okay. I can see the tension in the line of his shoulders. Odd how awkward he is when this isn't our first meeting. We'd met on professional terms, certainly, but I'd like to think I was friendly. Nonetheless, I do not push the issue about the apparent discomfort when we are left alone. Not right away, at any rate. I know my curiosity will get the better of me soon. Before I can say anything, however, he speaks up. You okay there, Hana? I mean, of course you're not okay after what happened in there. 
I mean, th th that was terrible, but you're not gonna just fall down and faint or anything, right? I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. A beat. I should be asking you the same thing. I remember you being a lot more eloquent. Oh, yeah. I'm just not too good with staying too long in a crowded room or handling intense drama, you know? Sorry about my clothes. Didn't think there'd be a dress code. Not that I have anything that nice to wear to a shindig like this. I dig nice, small, simple parties, so this is a real doozy for me. And do you host your own nice, small, and simple parties often? Only when there's occasion, birthdays, and stuff. Those are a lot more fun for me, and I can be a lot more selective about letting only the people I'm cool with attend, right? I get to pick the food, too. Of course, I make most of them myself. There's usually a dozen people or less, and all we really do is just hang out. Maybe do some grilling, karaoke, dancing, you know, the usual. That sounds nice. Yeah. You sure you're all right? You aren't exactly being eloquent yourself, as you put it. You must have something you want to get off your chest. I don't know, Zachary. What am I supposed to say? You can scream merd if you want. I won't snitch. You want to know what I think? How I feel? I think my friend may have slept with my husband. At least, I'm pretty sure she isn't pregnant with his baby, which isn't much now, is it? My husband is a selfish, pretentious, bloody sack of shite, and ugh, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck anymore! My god! Well, that ain't good. Not giving a crap won't make the problem go away. I'm going to ask him for a break, Zachary. I'm not going to pretend that there isn't a problem, but I just need to step back. Fair enough. As long as you don't just up and disappear on him, I suppose. Yes. Now can we please stop talking about him? Tell me more about your small, simple parties. Karaoke and dancing. How does that even go together? Simple, really. We hope Ash doesn't take the mic, put on a bit of fun music, and just dance. Not that I can. But there ain't nothing complex about it. You can't be that bad. I'm pretty good with the twist. Or that's what they tell me, at least. You got a pretty good relationship with them. No, I think they're just being nice. I'm sure it just looks awkward. I've learned that men tend to exaggerate. We got a huge You can't boost. honestly be that bad, can you? What? Do you need a demonstration? That would be preferable, yes. It's not like there's music here, Hana. Come on. I can barely dance with music, and I, 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 I don't want to be dancing alone. I'll just look silly. Imagine, mon ami. You are an artiste, are you not? With your photos and films and your guitar. You must know notes to play an instrument. Find a melody and a beat. Would it be such a stretch of the imagination? And don't fret. I will gladly be your partner. I can tell by his expression that he's flushed, embarrassed. But no more protests escape him and he focuses with a slight tilt of his head. Then he starts to hum a little tune. I drag him into the gardens while we go through the motions and he gains courage the farther we are from other people. And we just dance. Though he stumbles at first, unsure and bashful. <laughs> Where did you even learn to dance, Zach? The 60s want their moves back, honestly. The college of two left feet, obviously. And I'll have you know the twist is still an awesome dance. We're happy and we're having fun. Even as Zachary falls with his steps and did the funniest, oddest movements that anyone could pass off as dancing, there is no need to impress anyone, however, not even each other. And this is the most I've smiled and laughed in a long time. It is simple. Simple is nice. I wish the same can be said about what I'm about to do. Oh, did we get a journal entry? Get a drawing of us dancing? No, just us having a talk. Pause and... So we're at the part where we gotta show the photos to someone and I'm planning for us to show the photos to Anna. I don't- I would mean, imagine this is how we increase our relationship with her. Oh my gosh, how does our journal keep updating? I guess we actually skipped a lot of stuff with Zach. I don't have an explanation for what I saw yesterday. Yet. But when you've been there, seen something enough to raise the hairs on the back of your neck or leave you wanting to flee or hide? Finding a more solid proof than a person's smudged off face on a photo is the least of my concerns. Ashton will undoubtedly give me flack for saying that or even considering Isabella's words and those silly tales about the place. As a skeptic through and through, it'll take more than my account for him to even give this a single thought. However, more than his opinion, it's Mrs. Wright I'm concerned about. 
Surely she must have felt something in, if those shows on TV are to be believed. A touch of coldness on her neck. Or maybe the feeling of being watched. That's what often happens, ain't it? Outside the sun has yet to rise. I've still got a few hours before dawn. Good enough time to mull over how I'll go about warning her. Plenty of space to check it if I get the same result. If I redo the process again. The phone processor hums back to life at my touch. The light switch gives out a soft whiff and darkness embraces a small closet again. Somehow those urban legends don't sound so silly now. In hindsight, this is a dumb idea. That is to say, rushing to a client I barely know's home first thing in the morning with news of a ghost lady potentially haunting their newly bought property. Oh, and there's a bunch of bizarre looking pictures of Miss Hana I've brought as proof too. So yeah, dumbest idea in history, if my dumb I of my dumb ideas, all things considered. Let's hope we don't run into Luke. Traveling to the outskirts of Anselm Village at the crack of dawn with only my bike as company? Equally so. Personally, I don't think any of them would take whatever I'm going to say well, no matter how nice or accommodating they are. Ashton himself would tell me the same thing. Odds are, he'll laugh at it in my face for good measure. If he doesn't freak out at me first for not listening to his warnings. Still, that's a whole separate can of worms I'll open at a different time, seeing as I'm already standing on the Wright's front porch, waiting for someone to answer the door. More than anything, Miss Wright needs to know there's a possibility- there's possibly nothing safe in this place. Warnings from friends be damned. If only someone would answer the door sooner. Come on. Try to ignore the looming presence their large innate doors give me off- give off as I press the doorbell for the fourth time. Its shrill ringing merely echoes, carried off by another warm passing breeze. The first time I came to this place, I found myself basking in the silence it offers. Now the atmosphere is just heavy, packed with trepidation and tension. Isabel's right, it does radiate the creepy kind of vibe. And with the image from the other day constantly flashing in my mind, the unease becomes harder to ignore as each second drifts by. Now I need to spend more time than necessary, I ring the bell again. Now the long second ticks by without anyone answering the door. If this fails, I can always go to Ash. Not really the most sensible course of action, either, but waiting here ain't doing me any good. For all I know, the rights could be out of town. As luck would have it, just as I'm about to try my heel, a loud thump that rises from the other side. It's followed by heavy footfalls and a string of very colorful expletives about one's parentage. We should run now. Didn't we have that bloody annoying doorbell replaced yesterday? That I have started to cost me a fortune and she can't even fix this new thing. <laughs> Just hide in the bushes. Where the hell is your arms? If another person plan is pressing that blighted bell, I swear I'll cut that. Better not drop a slur. The door swings open and a very irate Mr. Wright greets me. His partly rumpled appearance a clear testament to how early the hour is. And who might you be? I don't recall asking the movers to show up this early. I was prepared to face Miss Wright, their butler more so. But Mr. Wright, I don't quite know what to make of him yet. I only caught sight of him yesterday as he's directing the movers. Although from how exasperated he sounded then, it seemed like more yelling was done than actual giving of directions. Needless to say, I'd like to believe those instances ain't all there is to the guy. Miss Wright, at the end of the day, did marry him. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna go badly. Standing before him like now, though, is a different story altogether. Despite the differences in our respective heights, he manages to make it appear like he's the one looking down at me, not the other way around. An apology instinctively forms in my mouth before anything else when he arches an eyebrow at my lack of response. Well, um, that's not exactly why I'm here, uh, Mr. Wright. Yeah? Right, of course, the one and only. And what can I do for you this fine morning? Have I seen you somewhere before? Bloody peasants all look the same to me. I... Yeah, I'm actually... It doesn't matter. I don't care. I've got someplace important to be at today. Just spit out what you want or be gone. I haven't got all day. His eyes are sharp and expecting in spite of his different tone. The very impression of someone whose sharp wit have served him well throughout life, the kind you have to carefully choose your words around. Disconcerting how a simple conversation can easily seem like a ruthless form of social maneuvering. I can see why Miss Wright would want to steer clear of it, if only for a short while. I feel like if we say friend for Hana, he's gonna hate us. So, I'm a photographer. I'm in luxury living, sir. Oh. Let, me, let me try picking the other one. Sorry, sir. I, I was just... Okay. I, I kind of figured that would make his relationship go down. You see, I, I'm a friend of Hana, and... A friend of Hana? <laughs> Hana doesn't have friends. Uh, yes, sir. His eyebrows shoot into his hairline at my answer. <laughs> that swiftly disappears under his dismissive gesture and a chuckle at his heels. A small frown spreads across my face before I can stop myself. What I said was nothing remotely funny in it, yet here he is, hugging an arm closer to himself in a weak attempt to keep his shoulders from shaking. Did I mispronounce something uh, wrong? No, no, not at all. You didn't. She... My wife has never mentioned a friend like you. <laughs> That's all. Friend like me? Wow. Mm, I suppose it's a good thing she's venturing out of the usual. 
vultures and savages, all of them hiding under sheep's clothing. Of course, maybe instead of race, he just meant a poor person. <laughs> I... I don't really get it, sir, but it's not really surprising she wouldn't talk about me. We just met yesterday during the shoot. Which he overheard, so this might not go well. As soon as the statement is out, the amicable air melts away almost palpably. His eyebrows crease into a frown and his posture stiffens. How fast the atmosphere around us changes in merely the span of a few spoken words, I'm not sure what I can and can't say anymore. Like handling a ticking time bomb. Is this why Ashton wants us to stay away from them? If so, part of me regrets not listening to him now. Shoot. Who are you again? Oh boy. Hmm, just profiles. Weird. Zachary Steele, sir. I was here yesterday from the magazine feature about your home. Ah, that Zachary, the photographer. I remember now. Just when you think she'd be careful meddling around media types these days, she makes friends with one. It was really just small chit-chat, sir. The usual. Uh, to keep things entertaining. The shoot did take the whole afternoon to finish. Oh, I'm sure she was pleasantly entertained. She wouldn't be making friends with media types if she wasn't. No matter. She's her own woman. She can do what she wants so long as she doesn't do anything to ruin herself. I'm sure Miss Wright is aware of that, sir. <laughs> that she is. But we aren't here to talk about her, are we? What is this about today? The city is a long way from here. <laughs> On push bike, no less. I... Yeah, I was actually hoping to talk to her. Of course. Here for another headline, perhaps. Not exactly, sir. Uh, I'm off work. This is for something else. <laughs> That's what they always say. The next thing you know, your face is in the front page of every conceivable scandal sheet going all the way to the ass end of Plymouth. You media types have such an insatiable taste for gossip. It's almost amazing. There won't be any of that in an interior design magazine, sir. I can assure you that one. Oh, you never know. Well-trained hounds have an uncanny way of sniffing out things no matter where you keep them. I do admire the passion, though. It takes a lot of energy for someone to leave bed this early, let alone knock at someone else's door at this hour. That aside, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back some other day. You see, darling wife left not a moment to go. I have not an inkling where she went or when she'll be back. So you're better off. Love, is it the movers? Yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. He stops speaking altogether and the complacent expression he has collapses on itself. Silly, he turns as his wife walks up to him with a step too lively for comfort, a smile too sweet, to be honest. She's very likely heard everything her husband and I have talked about. Going off somewhere. I've got the few things I want them to transfer already. Marianne made this splendid arrangement for the music room and... Love, are you listening? I thought you already left, buttercup. She musters a frown, a pout more like. A mischievous gleam in her eyes when she glances at me says all there is I need to know. I would have laughed at her antics if I wouldn't offend the other man. But as it is, it's better to let his wife have her fun without any reaction from me. I'm treading on dangerous grounds with him already. Well, I most certainly have not left yet. I wouldn't be standing here if I did, would I? Of course you wouldn't be, darling. But don't you need to be somewhere else today? Something... something with Mary Ash. Shopping girl... things? Oh, I'll be leaving in a few. Unless you want to join us. No thanks, darling. I'm afraid my liver... Oh, it's killing me today! Ooh. I thought as much. You needn't have to worry. I'll be gone in a few. It's just that I heard we have a visitor. What kind of person would I be if I didn't greet him before leaving? A very gracious one, I'm sure. Zachary, right? Zach? It's a pleasure to see you again. Likewise, ma'am. I was actually looking for you. Is that so? What for? A huge display of unprofessionalism is what it's for. Shush, darling. Let the man speak. And doing this in front of Luke is going to be I'm weird. sure it isn't anything like that if he has to come all the way here, yes? It's about yesterday. The photos you asked, I mean. The copies are ready, but... My hand stills as I'm about to fish the prints out of my pockets. A short second passes, that which strikes me how I didn't think this through at all. How I'll go about telling her regardless regarding the strange photos, or revealing this to her in the presence of another person. Her husband gazing over us like a hawk doesn't provide any sort of comfort either. And just like that, all the words I've been practicing to say on the way here inevitably fall stiffly out of my mouth. Miss Bright must have noticed my hesitance, because shortly she gives her husband's arm a gentle squeeze, a tender smile gracing her face. Unlike the first, this one is meant to appease. Love, I think Hansi might need some of your input for the final guest list. Could you check on him, please? Bollocks! Why in all Luxborn do I have to be there? 
doing tedious jobs are what he's being paid for. Because if we end up with people whose faces you do not want to show up in our housewarming party, we won't be hearing the end of it. And yet Rochelle still ends up there. Unless a heavy dose of liquor is involved. You know what the doctor said about that. Please do poor Hansi and your liver a favor, hmm? He can handle that on his own, Buttercup. And my liver is doing just fine. I'm sure it is. But I don't know, love. I think I caught a glimpse of the name Mitch Lakes, was it? I think it was Mitch Lakes on it when I checked with Hansi earlier. You should see for yourself. It was quite a list. Who put that blighted twat in there? And that's why I'm asking you to look over it before I do so tonight. <sighs> Very well. But even with that promise, he doesn't appear ready to leave. Sort of passing through their doors, he stops and glances back at me, all without bothering to hide the distrust in his eyes. Luke, dear, I'll be fine. Go back to your butler. I'm not some pregnant wife you have to worry about. Fine, fine. I have to go to that little ankle biter's career day later anyway. You don't see why I have to go there. Kylie's your goddaughter. And yet, she has you around her little fingers, darling. That's basically the same thing. If he ever has an answer to that, we don't get to hear it above the heavy thud the door makes and Miss Wright's own weary exhale after she makes sure her husband is out of earshot. She's nothing but apologetic when she fixes her gaze back to me, and I can't help but return the same to her. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. My husband can be a bit... trying when he really applied himself. It's fine, Miss Wright. No harm done. It was my fault for showing up here unannounced. And this might be strange coming from me, but he does have the right to be wary. The press can be quite vicious when it wants to be. Caught unexpectedly, they'll pick you apart. It's not surprising why he acted the way he did around Sweetie, me. Sweetie, if Luke treats every journalist who shows up here like that, I'm afraid we'll end up with a harassment lawsuit hanging over our heads sometime in the future. Vicious or not, some sort of finesse has to be exercised when dealing with them. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't too offensive. Not at all, Miss Wright. Besides, I don't think an interior design magazine would be interested in who harassed who this week. Unless it has something to do with fighting over tastefully arranged furniture. But even then, I don't think our readers will be too interested. Oh, dearie. You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> you really have no idea how a single tassel can ignite a spark in a crowd. Of course, at the end of the day, it's still the thought that counts. It's still a lovely anniversary gift for my husband. No matter. Let's just go. She doesn't wait for an answer and immediately wanders over a car parked some distance from us. Unsure, I find myself trailing after her. Chauffeur automatically opens the passenger side door she nears and she gestures for me to follow and she climbs into the back seat. Where are we going exactly? I need to get out of this stuffy house for a while. Moving in, planning the party. It started to get suffocating in there. Luke and Hansi can have their fun while I'm gone. I don't care. I'm getting out because I can. Another minute in there and I'll drown. My bike. There are, of course, a lot of que things questionable about her invitation. Why is she asking a person she has only known for less than two days in the first place is one. How appropriate this is being another. But the rest of it crashes the moment she shoots me an imploring Please. look. Please. I can have someone send it back to your address later. And it's just a trip to the city for some furniture. Nothing more, I assure you. Marianne will be with us, and maybe you can tell me why you're here on the way. Uh, guess it wouldn't hurt. I might have to leave early, though. Excellent, then. Hop in. That's what they often say, yes? This can't be a good idea, but I really don't have any other choice, do I? Especially with the way her eyes light up when I agree to it. In my pocket, the very picture of her remains faceless. A voiceless shadow hanging threateningly between us, unknown to her. Journal. This should be a new one. Disturbed, Zachary decided to show the photographs to Hana herself. He was greeted by a wary Luke Wright upon arriving at the mansion. Just in time, Hana appeared to save Zachary from further interrogation. At a request, Zach accompanied her to Luxborn City. If someone had told me I'd be spending my entire morning being dragged around half of downtown Luxborn looking for furniture, I probably would have simply smiled at them. Then perhaps even given them a good friendly pat on the shoulder and wished them a nice day. Not that I find anything wrong with this at all. On the contrary, this is most definitely a nice change of pace after weeks of being bogged down by several freelance gigs and shutting myself inside my apartment whenever I can. If only the weather would be a lot nicer. The kind with less sun and more clouds, perhaps. With the mid-morning sun slowly beating down on us as high noon approaches, I can see why Mr. Wright skipped out on this trip. The bright side is, the whole thing seems to have put Miss Wright in a less somber mood. After the fifth store, her pace is considerably livelier, her gestures less guarded than the one she displayed at the mansion earlier. 
The presence of another person might have helped as well. Although Miss McCullough seems less predisposed to small talk, preferring to keep to herself most of the time and let Mr. Miss Wright lead us whenever. She did acknowledge me with a small nod when we were introduced earlier, but that didn't make stand standing outside the store together any less awkward while we wait for our client to finish her inquiry inside. So, um, interior design, huh? She cast me a sidelong glance before returning to her notes again, her pen scratching faintly against the paper in quick successive strokes. Ah, uh, there goes that. I did say I'm not any good at starting or keeping conversations going, didn't I? She doesn't look back up again, and I take that as my cue to stop any attempt of striking a dialogue with her and keep myself occupied with some other thing. Except what we have here is just Luxborn and its busy streets. People going about their day like normal, cars moving in and out of sight, heading to who knows where. Nothing remarkable, really. These with such a person can fade into the background here is reflective of the kind of city Luxborn will always be, but the humdrum's one thing I learned to live with. Needless to say, it doesn't usually stay that way. There are times when it comes alive, make itself known, and reassert itself back to the world. However, those moments are few and far between. Then again, with what graces the news channels lately, I'm starting to think it's going to happen sooner. Can't say I'm looking forward to what it'll bring. Luxury living, is it? Her voice effectively cuts through my thoughts just as I count the 13th passerby wearing a hat today. Beside me, I can hear the faint rustling of paper and the clicking of her pen as she stashes them back to her bag. Excuse me, what? The magazine you're working for. It's luxury living, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. You've been featured by them before, I take it? A few years back, yes. For just some issues. My designs still appear from time to time, though not as frequent as before. Gotta have room for new talents, right? It may not show on her face, but the pride is evident in her voice. Good folks, the people running the publication. Tell me, is DK still on the editorial team? Donkey Kong? Nah, I wouldn't know. I've only started taking jobs from them this year. Freelancer, you know. Good man, that guy. Anyone in our field should meet him. He had a lot of things to say about art, all of them relevant. Learned a lot from him, actually. Even if we both came from two different fields. I hope he's in a good place. I haven't talked to him in a while. Anyway, your portfolio must have been good if they gave you the job. They don't easily assign big features to freelancers like this. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say I am, but experience, you know? The more you practice it, the more you learn the tricks of the trade. That kind of stuff. I know what you mean. Still, you've got to keep up with the competition. Each year, a new talent emerges, and, well, you never know. Clients can be a bit fickle-minded with their choices. Believe me. Speaking of, do you think you'd be up for a new client after this? I uh, think so. Depends on how big the project is. She reaches into her bag again. This time to pull out a business card, which she hands over to me. We normally didn't see these two When you're free, all. send your portfolio to Chris. He's my assistant. He's been looking for a decent photographer to help with updating the studio's portfolio. Nothing urgent, but the sooner the better. Not sure if I'll have the time to squeeze this in. But, all right, I'll give it a go once. Marianne, could you look this over for me? At that very moment, Miss Wright emerges from the store. When I look back to Miss McCullough, a mask of professionalism has returned to her. Or at least that is what it is trying to be. There's a different light in her eyes as she faces her, a flicker of familiarity and recognition. I'd say it's fondness, but that would be too presumptuous. Whatever it is doesn't last, and it's virtually sucked under the firm tone, under the firm tone her voice assumes. Definitely. Is there a problem? They said they don't have the colors you suggested. Do you think we can change it around for a bit? It might take a while if we insist what we want, and you know I'd rather not worry about this later. I think it'd be better if I handle this one myself. She's tightening her gloves. Excuse me. She's about to go murder somebody. She walks into the shop without another word, leaving the two of us standing outside. <laughs> as soon as she's out of earshot, however, Miss Wright lets out a giggle and swipes the business card cleanly off my hand. She smiles, a bemused little thing spreading across her face, and waves the card in front of me. I wish she'd do that more often, the smiling thing. It suits her more than the other one she frequently shows to the media. I look away, and the next thing I know, you're picking up women. On the streets, while the sun is high, no less. I'm not sure if I should be appalled or amazed. Whatever happened to the Zack I met a day ago? About as tall as you. Photographer? Quite the gentleman. To tell you the truth, I'm a bit disappointed he's gone. It ain't like that, Miss Wright. <laughs> and I'm sure Miss McCullough is not the kind of woman to let herself be picked up by strangers. Let alone people she barely knows. Oh, shush. Let me have my fun. And didn't I say you can call me Hana? This right after you introduced yourself as my friend in front of my husband. I do believe this isn't how friends address each other. 
too formal, don't you think? She was listening that whole time and she just left us there knowing how Luke is. She gives the card back to me nevertheless and with it her mood fades into a more pencils on her face, yearning a bit wistful as she looks back towards the shop's display window. There's nothing remotely interesting in it for me when I follow her line of sight though. A few trinkets here and there, a fur rug, a sofa, a sofa's a trinket, a wooden side, a table and a lamp, all taste room. On second thought, it does look comfortable. Why they added a crib besides the crib she's staring at. Unless, of course, the people they're hoping to market are those who are, are about to have one, then maybe it is fitting. But your choice of decorations aside, it does make for a nice icebreaker. If it's not on the same level of we- It still leagues better than the awkward silence, which is definitely too out of character for a personality like Miss Wright- Hana. Let's say, I think that one looks cute. I think that one looks cute. Hana box to my surprise, shuffling two steps away from the window and glares at it with such vehemence as if it did something remote and taken out of context. And I probably will be laughing, really, if- I uh, wasn't really talking about the crib, Hana. Very good, then. But it wasn't the crib, all right. All right, I get you. But that's not it. I was just saying the stuff that was on display there looks nice. Uh, or at least as nice as it can be compared to the ones we visited earlier. But, 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 but I'm, I'm sure your interior designer has something different in mind for your mansion, so don't mind me. I was hoping that would be enough to cut the topic short. Instead, she sighs, her hands through a lock of her hair. There's a far-flung look in her eyes even as she fixes it on the concrete curb. <laughs> I just said crib, concrete crib. <sighs> you need to stop looking at people like that, Sleety. Uh, I'm afraid I don't quite catch a drift, ma'am. I suppose you wouldn't be aware of it. Do you know you always carry this... this kind of face? Like you're always staring at the world with this honest look. Like all there is to see is all the good in it. Frankly... I don't see anything wrong if it's like that. I mean, there always has to be something in it. You know, a sprinkle of kindness here and there. That's what we do with Luke. Otherwise, we'd all be miserable. For you, maybe. Some people have to fight through it just to see that, and kindness isn't always a great thing to have around. Sometimes too much of it can hurt. It makes you wonder where this is coming from, how bad things have really gone for her to have this view. I do understand her sentiment. Really, I do. Still, when it's the last thing you can click to when things have gone irre irreversibly bad, sometimes you simply don't get to make a choice. Besides, the point is, it's impossible to lie when a person is looking at you like that. Or I could, but I'd feel like a horrible person afterwards. Did you hear that, Mr. Zack? You just made me feel like a horrible person. I sort of wish I have one like it. Just so people would stop lying to my face. Or you can stop by being honest with yourself. It shouldn't be quite hard. Friends don't lie to each other, don't they? I guess so. So what was the lie? She draws in a breath as a soothing hand on her stomach and- That it was really the crib I was looking at earlier, silly! You're right, Uncle Zack. It's cute, but the pattern's not to my taste. I'm pretty sure Marianne could do something about that, though. At the moment, what I should really be worried about is if I'm ever- I thought she didn't know until the doctor checkup. Really, huh? You didn't say anything to us? Mad! I can't even tell the father he's going to be one in a few months' time! Just a few months? How pregnant are you? You don't even have a stomach. Probably doesn't even want anything to do with this whole pregnancy thing. What am I going to do, Zack? Because right now, I'm absolutely at a loss. I'm glad she said at a loss, because it says at a loss again. Oh. The beat. Oh! The realization strikes me like a ton of bricks suddenly bearing down on me. <laughs> More than astonishment was just shown in my face because Hana lets out a chuckle, the slump on her shoulders disappears altogether underneath her mirth. Don't look so surprised, dearie. <laughs> Tie the knot. Don't you think it's bound to happen? She brandishes her hand in front of me, the unassuming silver band on her finger glinting against the late morning sunlight for a second. She eyes it lovingly, almost tenderly, despite the trace of sadness in her voice. For all I know, there's an entire story there. I'd ask, but that would be too inappropriate even for friends. But yeah, we gotta remember this is before the party. Are you saying it's a long time coming? But the kid is something you want, right? Because if it ain't, then that's a whole other problem. Of course! I wouldn't deny I've been hoping to have him or her for a long time now. But then, now that we're here, all of a sudden, there are a whole lot of other things to be worried about. Business, a new home, public image, and then... I don't know. I didn't really have anyone for a while. I practically grew up with a nursemaid pampering me every step of the way. What if it happens to this baby as well? Oh, I can already see how this will end. Huh. I guess it's not just my sister. What? You and my sister. I mean, your, your first baby jitters? Mind you, she was really convinced she'd do everything wrong then. He even called me in the middle of the night. Has to switch places the day she found out she's carrying a new member of the family. 
Never mind how utterly impossible her request is. I'm quite sure I haven't done anything of that sort yet. Oh, you don't know that. My brother-in-law has been telling me things five weeks into my sister's pregnancy. Since she's one cranky pregnant lady. Man, good thing I found a place for my sister. Don't be that awful. Who knows? I think we'd better leave it for Mr. Wright to decide, yeah? Provided he comes around. He just sounds so... So repulsed every time the idea is brought up. Then maybe you should say it to his face. No mincing of words or beating around the... And if he says no? You haven't even told him yet. Besides, that's his kid. Don't fatherhood change his men? I wouldn't call myself a living testament, of course. But there ought to be something that will hit him in that idea alone. <sighs> oh, I guess... <laughs> Laughter is Casey before I can stop and join in. He's still her husband, no matter what jests or complaints she hurls about him behind the media's eyes or in the presence of people she trusts. <laughs> when she does, her chuckle, a small hesitant sound at first, I find the rest of my unease slipping away. Well, whatever it is, my point is, you've got no idea what will happen. In the same way, you don't know if... Trust me, my sister's been there. Per if, uh, my opinion matters, though. A long second of in just a simple sentiment, but one thing I think she needs to hear for all the doubts she unwittingly places on herself. I'm just not sure if it should come from me. Ah, I'll I be think... damned. I think you'll be a great mother, Hana. If she has an answer to that, I don't get to hear it, nor does she get to say it. As soon as it's out of my mouth, the bell hanging over the antique store's door chimes, and out comes Miss McCullough. For more than one reason, I have never been so relieved our talk got interrupted. Everything's been taken care of for tomorrow, Mrs. Wright. They'll have everything you requested delivered early. I've left them instructions, but I may have to visit again right before your housewarming party to check for a few things. Arian, back to sounding loud again. I hope that's acceptable to you. More than Marianne. This is a little early to say, but you did marvelous work with the mansion. I can't wait to see all of it come together tomorrow. I'm only doing my job, ma'am. Needless to say, it's always a pleasure to hear a client is satisfied with my work. Nonsense. You have every reason to be proud. I wonder if we're ever going to actually show her to vote. I know you've already established your name here. But I'll still make sure word gets out, of course. I think I've got a few friends who might be interested in decorating their homes. I'll see if I can introduce you to them tomorrow. I really don't want to impose, Mrs. Wright. There's still a lot to be done, and I'd rather be keeping an eye on it myself. You know well enough I'll still do it. You too, Monsieur Le Photographe. You better be the one taking the pictures for the event tomorrow, or I'll be very upset. I blink at her, confused. Last I checked, I have nothing scheduled on my plate tomorrow. A couple of fleeting thoughts did cross my mind, like working on personal projects. But with the expectant expression on Hannah's face alone, I've wondered before how they got Isabella to sell them the mansion, with all the paperwork and the loops it has to go through. Well, now the how is already standing in front of me, and it's one giant ball of persuasion in human form. If I have any doubts about how she got around in life, all of them have been dispelled right in this instant. Hannah hasn't said anything yet, but I already know what my answer will be. What event? A housewarming party, dearie. I've already sent invites through your publisher. They should have informed you of it by now. Ash probably found the invitation and ate it. I may have probably missed it. I haven't gotten the chance to check my mailbox yet. If deadlines, real life happenings, you know, they can be pretty hectic. I'll try later, but they might have already assigned it to a different photographer if they haven't received my reply yet. That's not a problem. Nothing a little call from me can't fix. I'll have them know I'm specifically requesting for your presence. It shouldn't be too hard. Just promise me you'll show up. I expect to see you both there. No excuses. Good company, good music, good food. Of course I'll be there. Lovely. I hope we have that settled then. I'd love to stay and chat, but unfortunately I have an appointment scheduled with the doctors after this. You two will have to excuse me. Are you feeling fine, ma'am? It's nothing big. This is a short, there's a short while in her which her hand faintly touches her stomach when she says this. Her smile as she does so, a tender thing in itself. She might never let it cross her mind, but motherhood would suit her. The kid is already loved even when he or she has yet to have a sense of the world. Candid moments like this, I wish I'd brought a camera Sorry for. we had to cut this short. I'd love to have lunch with you two, but, well, you two know how it goes. It's quite fine, Mrs. Wright. I need to get going as well. Is it somewhere far from here? I can have my driver drop you off on the way. No. No, please. Th there's no need for that, Mrs. Wright. It's just within the city. I see. What about you, Zack? We did leave your push bike at the mansion. Uh, don't worry, I'll have someone bring it to your home later. Nah, I, I live within the city too. A few blocks from here, in fact. I only visited earlier because... 
the photos. Damn, I've completely forgotten about them. My hand grazes the side of my pocket where I've kept them since this morning. And sure enough, they're still there waiting for the whole world to see because them. Because? Zack, sweetie, you're zoning out. I... Uh... Miss Hana, earlier, at, at the mansion? Hmm. I'm gonna say never mind, see what happens. Yay! She should know, I really should tell her yet. Zachary, what is it? When I look at her, all I see is a woman who only wants the best for the family she's trying to build. I see those loving smiles on her face whenever she puts her hand over her belly, the fond tones in her voice every time she thinks about what will be in a month's time. I bet she bought that mansion for the same reason, to fill its many rooms with the smiles and laughter of their children, to create memories from it, unlike the lonely ones she had as a child. And I can't bring myself to shatter that little wish. What other proof do I have except for what may be taken as a couple of badly developed photos? No matter where you look at it, this is ridiculous. Maybe I am seeing things, and I need to visit my doctor again as soon as possible. About the photos you requested. Oh, are they done? No, actually, they're, they're not done yet. I had to finish the ones for the magazine first. I really don't want to rush it. Please don't tell me you came all the way to Anslin just to tell me that. I made you a promise. Oh, you poor thing. I won't hold it against you if you can't give it to me soon. I'm not rushing you, dear. Good art takes time, yes. I'm more concerned about the quality than how fast it gets delivered. With it, I'm sure I'll get my money's worth. You really don't have to pay for it, Hana. Shush you. Don't sell yourself short. You keep doing that and other people will follow. I'll have my secretary send the first half to your account tonight. No bots. Behind her, Miss McCullough merely nods, melting at me to just take it as it is. She know, of course, being the other person working for the rights. But even if I decline, I'm certain Hana won't be giving me a choice. She'll do it anyway. I guess I'll just have to make sure I'll take good photos tomorrow at your party, yeah? Fair enough. I'd love to discuss it with you, but I'll only get in the way. And I really need to leave now. Uh, have a good day, then. You too, sweetie. She smiles and waves, and then she's gone, leaving me wondering if I just wasted half of my day worrying for nothing. But the weight of the photos in my pocket is impossible to ignore. Maybe I should have done the foolish thing instead. Miss McCullough departs shortly, a shortly after Miss Wright has taken her leave. Muttering something about getting a quick lunch before fetching Baruthio from Chris. Oh, I need a cute little crib. I'm surprised this isn't a sheep and not a bear. But I don't think Hana and Brent would ever have a three-star crib. At Luxborn City, Zachary and Hana met with Marianne McCullough. While Marianne was busy, Hana disclosed her pregnancy and her frustrations to Zach. At the end of their talk, Zachary changed his mind about the photos. I don't know what or who a Baruthio is. It must be important for her to be in this kind of hurry. And, while well, she doesn't seem fond of small talk, something we can both agree on. Lunch sounds good, or a walk around the city maybe, but with the sun as high as it is now, nah. After how things with Miss Hana went, I, can't, I simply can't muster the appetite for anything at the moment. If I don't do anything with it now, I have this impression it will rear an ugly head again. And by then, things might be too late to fix. What other choice do I have? Ash? Rebecca? In all likelihood, all they'll give me is a pat on the back and a Z-man go get some sleep, you're at it again for Ash. I talked to Isabella, but I haven't seen her around since she showed up in my apartment two days ago. Weird. There is one person, Damn, though. I should have thought of that first. Oh, God. Oh, no, we're probably gonna talk to the priest, who is also a bartender and a cop. But I think we should probably end this. Yeah, we're at 58 minutes, so... That was actually an interesting scene, and we're gonna get another new scene. So that was a lot of new content all of a sudden. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment, and I will catch you all next time. Bye!